All right, and welcome back to Leather Soup Gaming. My name is Max. I'm Ricky. Max, what are we doing? Well, today I'm getting shot at and following a bunny. And running oh, through a dear, hallway Justin. with steak? What's with all the meat? I don't know. <laughs> um, I think it's sexual. <laughs> oh, God. It's probably sexual repression. Only if you... Where? Yeah. Where? Nope, nope, not, not, do, nope. We are in a white, western, ten-year-old boy's brain. It is going to be sexual. God dang, everything is sexual. What the heck is that? that you have a very serious mental problem. You have to pay attention to The this. trouble originates in this area. Here, the area that we in the medical profession like to refer to as the brain. You see, son, it's just no good. I hate to be so blunt, but you have the insanity of a manatee. I know. People are always saying that. I what do you think's wrong now. with my brain, doctor? Well, how should I know? I'm a dentist. <laughs> Here's what I do know. If a tooth is bad, you pull it. But my teeth are fine. Yep. Mad brain's got to come out, boy. It's the quickest way to cure what you've got. Grab the crowbar. Insanity of the mind. But I now, don't want sh 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 now hold still. This will only hurt until your brains come flying out. <laughs> Get back! No! Don't worry, Dogen. I'm coming up there to Braz, save you. what the heck, man? No time to explain, Sasha. I gotta climb this spooky thorn tower. Oh, jeez. You know, there's a whole thing of if you take your brain and put it into another li livable container, are you still you? Uh, well, uh, yes, but you may not act the same way. Granted. Um, uh, uh, example of this. My grandfather, um, uh, the one that I'm named after, um, got hit. Is, is he the one that I met? Yes, the really tall one. Yes, I remember him. Uh, cool guy. Really cool. I like him a lot. Uh, we love him. Uh, so, he got hit by lightning. <laughs> yes, uh, he did. I remember you telling me that. And he got hit by lightning, and it, uh, he still has a scar on the top of his head and on the roof. Not of surprising. The, on the roof of his mouth, where it came out. Jesus. It. Um, it literally traveled through his brain. It literally traveled exclusively through his brain. That's terrifying. The man next to him. Um, Got uh ooh, the milkman. Uh ooh. pre precursor. <laughs> um spoilers. Uh foreshadowing! So, so uh, come come back here, you piece of shit. That thing is really Calm hopping, down. topping away. Come come down. I can't I I know you can't shoot it. Smack that button. Okay, the world shall taste my eggs. I'll get back to my grandfather. What what? So this is supposed to be in his head, right? Raz's head, right? Raz's head. Yes. Egg. 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 Brain. Fish. Fish. Fish and brain. Fish, brain, and carnival. Do the carnival. Fish and brain and teacup. Whoa! One of these things is not like the other! I'm seeing some crazy stuff in here, Sasha. This can't be right. Ugh. Why did I buy the cheap brain tumbler? <laughs> <laughs> Okay, so um, when my grandfather woke up, he was not the same person that he was. It, it fried up sections of his brain and yeah. it kind of altered There's it a no bit. Yes. Oh, that's terrifying. Um, he had no humor. Power. Oh wow. Um, I don't know how to let it. He was. Uh, it, it it was. Um, and the same thing happens to people that have no, like uh, strokes and such. Uh, strokes and really heavy concussions. Mm. Um, their personality changes. Their yeah. tendencies change. Um, and it's a scary thing because I bet. they're driving the ship and noticing that their ship has changed. Yeah. Um, I have no. I cannot pretend to know what that feels like. No, I know it's terrifying. And it must be extremely frustrating because you're like, I used to enjoy this activity before. Yeah. Why do I not now? Let's go to or the way you perceive the world can change. Like um, my one of my favorite authors, uh, Science Mike, um, he got into a telekinesis. Yay! Telekinesis. All right, and we're gonna go through a tutorial about that. Okay. Uh, well, it's a good time to talk about it. So. Um, 
<laughs> now, let's see if you set happen. What are we up? Well, whoa, 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 whoa. About, whoa. Tell me about it. And the weird thing is, I'm pretty sure he's actually psychic himself. Whoa, ha, cuckoo. Well, you can work on him when you get home for now. All right. So, um, so, uh, he used to be. Let's see you do that again. Don't be shy. Bingo. Okay. Last one. So he used to be shy. Uh, no, he used to be. Um. What is it? Um. The side of the caravan. There we go. Kablooey. Oh no. Looks like why don't you smash him? Come on. You. Focus, man. All right, hold on. I have to get. I have to get through this. Okay. There we go. Okay, so um, Science Mike got into a motorcycle accident, and when he got out, he now has way less patience. Ah. Uh. Um, significantly less patience with everything. Yeah. And he gets upset well, way easier, and he'll notice it, uh -huh. but he can't do anything to stop it. Right. To the main lodge. That's frustrating. And yeah, and so he's found support groups. Um. And uh, he VRs a lot, mm. and that's been helping. Um, but like, nothing really changes. Nothing changes you. That brain chemistry. Yeah. That's oof. That takes a long time. Big time. Um, We're gonna be talking a lot about brains and feelings and emotions in this playthrough, aren't we? Yeah. We we already have. What am because, I talking about? Because this silly game does a really good job. Top web sold to the big head. Of bringing up all these subjects. Yeah. And what like not making it a joke. Yeah. Right. Go get more airheads and come on. That's a hard balance, and really. The only other game I can think of that makes me really go, hmm, about especially with brain and well consciousness is uh, Soma. Soma. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Uh, the one thing that freaks me out, that freaked me out the most, I haven't played it. I don't think I have. No, I don't have the game. I should play it sometime. Uh, the one, the one beginning where you get the one PDA girl thing, and you know she, you meet her and she's like, yeah, unplug me, plug me back into the program over to the system over there. I'll unlock the door for you, etc., cetera, etc. Cetera. So you're like, okay, sure, no problem. Yes. Unplug her, thing turns off, walk over, put her back in, and she's screaming. Just screaming. Oh, God. And it's that realization that, for all intents and purposes, the moment you unplugged her, she's dead. Just dead. By every definition, there is no power through her. There is nothing that's making her think. She, There's nothing of her. And the second you plug her back in, immediately all power comes back, and her functions, her her what you what you might call function uh, consciousness, is all of a sudden brought back, and she's just screaming from that shock. And maybe stop and think, oh dear God, that's terrifying. And the whole idea of you know you downloading your consciousness into another like robot, I guess in this case, and. You know, your robot you is thinking, yeah, I'm I'm me, and then your fleshy, squishy, fleshy, softy you is like, I'm me, and you both could be considered right. Yes, and because, it's because you are. Yeah, but but one of you is clearly not, but at the same time, could by all definition be, and it's ooh, ugh, makes oof. It's those things like that that make you stop and go, mm -hmm. Man, this thing was old when they That makes me fearful of science in the future. It's pretty scary. Um both of <laughs> both of us are against I think I think it's safe to say that you and I are both I'm against uh, transhumanism. Uh, like the uh, trans, I believe transhumanism. If I'm using the term right, if I'm wrong, um, I apologize. That's a jacked up Jeep. So, uh, transhumanism is like, instead of fixing someone's broken leg, we should give them a robot leg that helps them jump over buildings. That's actually the plot of the new The Last Deus Ex game. It's been, it's yeah. been pretty much Deus Ex the whole time. Yeah. <laughs> uh, and so I think... Yeah, I... To me, I can see, 
I for, could, augmentation to me is something to help someone get back to a norm. Yeah. Like no, like a plastic to, surgery. If I got into a car accident and my face got massively distorted to the point where it's not like it was before, I would go to a plastic surgeon and say, I would like to for you to do to, do, to the best of medical ability, make my face look the way it was. I don't want to make my face... I know I'm not the most handsome devil you've ever seen, contrary to popular belief, but I, I still don't hate my face. It's what I was born with. And if I got distorted from it, I'd like it to return back the way it was. But you all, And so you also don't want to see in the dark or like yeah. be able to see it, uh, like Darth Vader style, be able to see everything. <laughs> yeah. So like, yeah, like that. Um, and there's a lot of... Uh, or even like human human cloning. Is better. Oh, that's a whole nerd topic. It really is. Uh, and I think that... Um, and uh, like, if you've ever read My Sister's Keeper, uh huh, um, that's about having another child. Uh, uh, no, uh, no real spoilers necessary. Um, they, yeah, yeah, there we go. All right. Is so, that the concept of making they, clones to take their organs? Yeah, except it's like a living person. It's like a daughter. Yeah. So your your first daughter is having a rough time of it. And so you decide to have another child for the only for the simple purpose of keeping the first daughter alive. Jeez. And the the second daughter sues. Rightfully sues. Yeah. And it's terrifying. There's a book I read in like middle school, House of the Red Scorpion. That sounds familiar, but I haven't read it. It has a very similar premise where it's about this uh, this world that's like literally half a country or something that this guy owns. He is by far the wealthiest and oldest man in the entire world. Owns like half a country as his land and convert it to be like when he was younger, like as a kid. So like planes don't go, planes don't fly over it. Radio signals come in that were from his time. He's that powerful. And to keep himself alive, he has clones of himself made so that when his organs start to fail, they kill the clone and replace the organ with the cloned. And that's how he stayed alive to like, I think the book, he's like 180 or something. Sweet baby Jesus. Yeah, it's ridiculous. And the book takes the perspective of basically the newest clone. And this guy literally treats the kid as his son. Like, even better than the guy's actual sons. Because this clone is him, so he has, like, the whole narcissism thing about it. Yeah. And the kid's like, I love the old man. He's nice to me. He's the only one who's nice to me because everyone else views me as just an it. Yeah, as meat. As meat because that's what their previous me's have been. And I don't, and, like, basically, I don't want to spoil everything in the book, even though the book's been out for, like, ages, and I don't think it was very popular. Uh, I don't really know. But did you have to read it for like high school or something? Yeah, it was a middle school book book thing, like choose your own book and write a report kind of thing. Oh, okay. Uh, but I enjoyed it, and it it dove into those issues a bit more, which was really cool. And there's a whole adventure and everything there and such too. But yeah, I like the concept, or I like the the problem of the concept. I'm not gonna go out and clone humans and harvest the organs. Since this is just a mangrove swamp, you can walk through it. I like it. I used to go canoeing, canoeing, kayaking a lot in mangrove. In fact, my uh, my fourth grade teacher was so into canoeing, or god dang it, kayaking, that she was second in line to be the judge to judge. To, to judge the next team for the U.S. Kayaking Olympics. Whoa. Yeah. That's and, cool. And my family would meet her a lot when we would just go to an organization and just go on a kayak trip for a little bit, for like the day. Yes. And she she was easily, at that point, in her like 60s or something. Mm. She was faster than me and my dad. Like on a, on a two-seater. Whoa. Yeah. 
She also gave me a. She also was in tours for giving me a no. metric buttload of homework. The bear floats. Yeah, he's psychic. The bear freaking floats. <laughs> what? No, stop! No, I didn't mean to. Screw you. No, freaking stop! Holy cow, this bear is relentless. I'm gonna die here. Uh oh. This is how I die. Uh, that's this is it. Get the heck out of here. That's hilarious. All right, and with that, we're gonna call this one an episode. <laughs> the bear freaking floats. <laughs> All right, so food for thought for today. Uh, have you ever thought about how, like, you know how elves, uh, like Tolkien's elves, yeah, uh, live like four times or like up to seven times like our normal lifespan? I think I know where you're going with this, but keep going. You ever thought about how, like, we are to elves, Tolkien's elves, as dogs are to us? As dogs are the mortals and we are the immortals. Yeah. The dog. I have seen them take care of my generations before. They love us. They take care of us. We are here to serve them and to do our best to take care of them. And then you have the dog that has the old person. Rarely have my kind seen them in such a state. To see them grow old, to know that they are truly mortal, but at such a length that we can never perceive them. Truly, I must take care of him, for he has taken care of me. You had that shit memorized. I'm so proud of you. I read it a long time ago, and I loved it. That's so good. All right. Y'all have a nice day. Go pet a puppy. <laughs>